So exactly what I'll be talking about today is a relatively new technique in carotid revascularization. So we'll just jump right into it. I have nothing to disclose, nobody other than the practice pays me. Um, and objectives today are to review, what are our options currently for carotid intervention? Why do we do it? Learn a little bit about what TCAR is and then cover some of the evidence of um, what that shows why um, it's becoming more popular right now. So carotid intervention has a long history. It's one of the, uh, one of the first vascular surgeries that was performed. It's one of the best studied uh, vascular surgery topics period. There's hundreds and hundreds of papers. Um, so we know really quite a bit about it. The goal of any type of carotid intervention or surgery of any type um, is to reduce the risk of embolic stroke, which is from disease that exists primarily around the carotid bulb or basically where the artery splits. Um, and also part of the proximal or very first part of the internal carotid artery. Uh, what happens there is contrary to what you might originally think, instead of it being a result of uh, stroke or issues from it becoming too narrow, typically our problems that we see are actually from little bits of that plaque that break off and then either embolize to the retina or to the brain and cause a spectrum of disease from either temporary eye blindness mini strokes or even uh, full strokes and sometimes devastating strokes. Um, and so what we do is we try and remove that plaque or stabilize it with a stent uh, to reduce the risk of stroke in patients. Our options to do this are the, the OG, uh, carotid and arterectomy. That's where we make an incision over the neck. Uh, we open the artery and we scoop out all the plaque and we close it again, typically with either a patch or by reattaching the artery after we clean it out um, so that you have a nice clean artery. Other options are carotid stenting, where we place a stent over the disease area to widen the lumen and to basically squash the plaque down. Um, traditionally, this used to be done through femoral access where we poke in the groin artery, the femoral artery, and use a wire and catheter to get all the way up to the carotid and then place the stent. Um, recently though, uh, a new technique has been developed called the transcervical or TCAR uh, carotid stenting. And this is where we make a small incision at the base of the neck, uh, cut down directly onto the carotid artery and directly access it with a needle and sheath uh, from there and place the stent from a much shorter result, uh, place. Um, we'll talk about some other differentiating details that make this procedure different than the transfemoral approach other than a much shorter road to get there. So carotid stenting, kind of like I just talked about, is a stent across, and here you can see this nice picture that, de that shows kind of exactly what we're doing. And again, it's the same goal as open surgery to reduce the risk of uh, embolic stroke. It's much less invasive. You can typically do uh, the, at least the transfemoral and also the TCAR approach uh, with just sedation. Um, and can, this is nice because the patient uh, does not be, is not exposed to the risk of general anesthesia. And you get, it's the best type of neuromonitoring you can get because you have immediate constant feedback from the patient. Um, and this is use typically indicated in patients who are high risk for an open surgery. Someone who maybe can't tolerate general anesthesia, someone who um, has a very difficult neck to operate on. They've maybe had multiple surgeries in, on the neck before, or perhaps they've had radiation. Uh, the multiple surgeries and radiation make uh, open surgery much more difficult. The analogy I tell to our patients is if you imagine normal surgery being where you're just pulling apart sheets of dry tissue paper, if you imagine dunking the whole lot of tissue paper in water and then trying to peel it apart, it doesn't come apart quite so easily. You don't have those natural planes between them. So everything's more sticky. And so it's very easy to tear your sheet or basically go down through areas that you would rather not go down between. And that can lead to a higher risk of cranial nerve injuries, um, which can lead to difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking, or even um, loss of higher ranges of voice, uh, range of tones of the voice, as well as um, possible airway compromise if they have a bilateral injury that might require a tracheostomy. So pretty serious stuff. And so we like to avoid that if all possible. And those are the indications for doing carotid stenting. So why don't we just always do carotid stenting? It seems like a way better way to do it if you don't have this huge scar on your neck and you don't damage nerves. 
Well, there was a big randomized controlled trial looking at stenting versus open surgery, and it showed, especially in the older populations, that the risk of stroke in subgroup analysis was higher in carotid stenting compared to carotid endarterectomy. And since that's the whole point of why we do the surgery, um, it has not, it's become less popular, except for in those who surgery is deemed too high risk. Also, you have to go across the arch, as you can see here, to get to especially the right side. You have to go all the way across those other vessels, which just means uh, more challenges that can be difficult or more other potential risks of stroke. So what is a TCAR? Um, like I said, this is one where we um, place the stent from direct access in the carotid artery. Um, it avoids that arch disease, and um, it can also, the incision is quite low and out of the range of where other surgeries are typically done and we're and out of the typical radiation field for most head and neck cancers. Um, the other part of it that this picture illustrates is that it uses a flow reversal system. In traditional transfemoral carotid stenting, when you're placing wires across the area of narrowing, you always risk breaking little bits off because you're kind of poking around in there. Um, and so what we use is a distal embolic filter, basically a big net up above that catches any of the junk that we shower off. In TCAR, we actually they have designed a really ingenious flow reversal system. Arteries are high pressure, veins are low pressure, everything always wants to move from high to low pressure. So we have a system that connects the artery, the carotid artery, we access it down to the femoral vein and actually now reverses the flow of blood from the brain down to the femoral artery. And believe it or not, people tolerate this really well. Your, your brain has so much collateral flow that it's, patients are totally fine. So now all the junk that we shower loose goes down into our system and our filter as opposed to going up into the brain. And naturally that makes a lot of sense. Um, also because the incision is so small and less dissection is needed, your risk of cranial nerve injury is much lower than the open surgery still. And it's a much shorter operative time. So the downsides, it's not perfect. Not every patient meets criteria. There is still a risk of cranial nerve injury. One out of the three at risk as opposed to three out of three that you would potentially damage with a difficult open surgery. Um, a lot of patients do still get general anesthesia. I've done one of these without it, so it is possible. And in the trials, it was about 50-50 of who got general, who got sedation. Um, but most people are more comfortable making cuts on the neck when someone's asleep. Um, but it can be changed patient by patient basis. And um, there are less providers able to perform this. You have to be a surgeon to be able to cut down onto the carotid as opposed to an interventionalist like an interventional radiology um, proceduralist or an interventional cardiologist is not able to do this procedure because they cannot perform uh, the carotid cut down. They could do it with help of another surgeon, but regardless, this does somewhat limit the accessibility. Fascist surgeons like it because it means we get to hold on the market for that. So, you know, teach their own. Um, what does the evidence show? Uh, so one of the initial studies that was just showing that this is a safe, uh, effective intervention had 44 patients looked at an end point of stroke and my death. Um, and I think the interesting, the more important thing, and they showed, of course, that it's safe and it works well. Uh, but I think the interesting thing is you look at this, um, the far right column that says new DWMRI lesions, and it showed that compared to transfemoral carotid stenting, when you do an MRI after the procedure, you see all this evidence of little junk that's gone up into the brain. And when you look at TCAR, that amount is much less. It's actually more comparable with what you see with a carotid endarterectomy as compared to stenting. Um, and so the trials show that there's no major adverse and it worked really well. Then there's the Roadster trials. I shot, probably should have put a Porsche, but I always reminds me of a Roadrunner, so that's what I think of. Um, and road, the Roadster trials showed, again, this is an amazingly safe and effective procedure. It has low rates of uh, death and stroke. And in fact, it shows that the overall stroke rates are comparable to that of endarterectomy with a lower cranial nerve injury rate. And in some parts of the trial, like in Roadster 2, um, those that strictly followed the protocol that was laid out by the Silk Road company for TCAR, they actually had an amazingly low stroke rate of almost half a percent, which was um, a typical carotid endarterectomy stroke rate is around 1 to 1 1.4. So pretty impressive results. This is a nice little graphic just showing uh, a study that was looked at TCAR versus trans um, femoral stenting. And it shows, again, a lower stroke rate um, and lower end composite of uh, stroke TIA death. So again, showing that it's really a very safe and effective and much lower stroke rate than traditional uh, carotid stenting. 
Um, and then lastly, versus the gold standard and our directomy open surgery. Uh, you can see that it has, uh, the only thing that was significantly different was again, uh, the rate of cranial nerve injury. So just lots of evidence piling up here saying that this TCAR approach is as safe as far as stroke rate as open surgery, has a lower cranial nerve rate of injury um, and is effective for patients. And people like it, it's a short, fast surgery. Um, it is safe and effective. It reduces your risk of stroke um, and it's a great thing. So just to summarize, like I said, safe and effective. Um, it has the same indications as all carotid disease. If your patient is symptomatic, having uh, temporary blindness in one eye or, or amaurosis fugax, um, mini strokes, actual strokes, we fix that for greater than 50%. If they have no symptoms, but they have a greater than 80% stenosis, we repair it. Um, and then currently TCAR, we do use it in those that are high risk for open surgery. Those with pri that is those with prior surgery, radiation, neck injury, they can't flex their head back or something like that. Or those with a high lesion that would be difficult and risky to do surgery for. Um, it's a similar stroke rate to an open surgery or the carotid endarterectomy and a much lower stroke rate than traditional transfemoral carotid stenting. Also, the incision is smaller and a lot more cosmetic and can really hide nicely in folds of skin. So there's that bonus too. So thanks. <laughs>